After traveling many days, Pierre arrived at the home of a wise sage who guarded the Rose of Life. He offered to pay any price for her rose, but she told him he could have it for free. However, she warned, the Rose of Life curses whoever touches it. Pierre agreed without hesitation. He knew it was the only chance to save her. As Pierre journeyed home, he saw the Rose had begun to wilt. He panicked. He gave the rose water, but a single petal fell to the ground, turning to dust. Rage flowed through him like lightning. He cried out as his body began to change shape. When he came to his senses, he shrieked at his beastly appearance, racing home.
Well, I hope you're friendlier than that last guy. No, he didn't have a baby with him, but he did steal my magic beans. Well, thankfully, I hid a few last week, but now I can't remember where they are. The story of Tony and the snails. Tony was no ordinary frog. Sure, he loved to leap around and do all those frog things. He looked like a frog. He croaked like a frog. No one doubted he was a frog. But there was one thing Tony loved more than anything else, and that thing made him special. Tony loved his reed pipe. Every morning as the sun rose, he smoked his favorite pipe. That morning was no different. Tony was sitting on his rock, smoking his pipe. Tony loved sitting on his rock. Next to his pipe, his rock was Tony's most favorite thing. Then, without warning, three snails passed by Tony, his pipe, and his rock. They were quite slimy and one might say, quite ordinary snails. What are you doing near my rock? Tony asked the three snails. I don't see your kind often in these parts. Well, we're here, said the snails, to find a clover for each of us. We need a little good luck. Tony helped the snails find three clovers, so they had good luck all of their days. You see, as soon as they found them, they also discovered an old jewelry box with three pieces missing from its cover. They found one half of the golden apple, but they wanted the whole thing. The other part was buried nearby. 
I saw the people who built this statue bury it nearby, but the shovel broke and the handle got stuck inside the statue. Tony broke the stone and found a handle. Now he only needed a metal part of the shovel. If we assemble the shovel, we can find the second half of the golden apple, said Tony. They assembled the shovel after looking for the second part for some time. Now all that was left to do was unearth the second part of the apple from the ground. They found the second half of the golden apple in the ground. It was nice and shiny, just like the first part. The four friends sold the golden apple and bought a real apple, with money left over to last for many seasons. It just goes to show, sometimes what you're looking for is right under your nose. <laughs>